Hey everyone, I'm Arya, and in this tutorial, we're going to create this satisfying looping animation using geometry nodes. Let's get started. We can select our default cube, and since we're using geometry nodes, let's just come down to the left here. Then, once you see this little plus sign, you can left click and just drag up to add a new window, and then select the geometry node editor. Then, click new. We can just select our input and hit delete. If you look over here on the right, it still says we have our cube, but now it's just being used as a container. I'm just going to rename that to Geo just so that it's not confusing. The first thing that we want to do is start with a base, and in this case, we're going to use a circle, so hit Shift A. Then you can either search for Curve Circle, or if you just go to Curve Primitives, then we can just select our circle. And what we want to do is just rotate this. So I'm going to hit Shift A, type in Transform, and just drop that in. In this case, we want to rotate on the Y axis. So let's click the Y rotation and type in 90. The next thing that we want to do is add instances on our curve. So we can hit Shift A, type in Instance. You'll see this option here, Instance on Points. Just select that and drop it in. Our curve now disappeared, and the reason why is because there's nothing being instanced around the circle. Hit Shift A, then search for Icosphere, then just select the mesh output and drop that into the instance. Bring the radius down a little bit for now to 0.1, just so that we can see things a little better. Now you'll see that we've got points going around our curve circle, but this isn't really what we want. We actually want to have more of a torus shape with volume. And the way we do that is we just need to convert our curve into a mesh. So hit Shift A and search for Curve to Mesh. Then we just want to drop that right after our curve circle. You'll notice nothing changed at all. And the reason why is because we don't have a profile for our curve. If I just plug this straight into the output, you'll see that we still have just our curve circle. In this case, what we can do is just select our curve circle and we're going to hit Shift D to duplicate. Then, if we drop this into the profile curve, you'll see now that we have this massive torus. So, we can just select the radius and set that to 0.3. And now you'll see that we've got a proper mesh. Then, if we plug our instance node back into the output, you'll see now that we've got points going around the outside of the torus. If I was to mute this one node, you'll see the difference. Next, we just want to change the shape of our icospheres. So, I'm going to add a subdivision surface node. And let's set that to 3. Then if I zoom in, you'll see that the surface of these icospheres is a little bit rough. So just like we can right click and shade smooth, we can actually do that within the geometry nodes. And the way we do that is just to search for shade. And you'll see there's two different ones here. And the one we want is set shade smooth. Then now that we have our base, we need something to affect our geometry nodes. I'm just going to make this a little bit smaller for now. We will change this, but this makes it easier to see through. So let's hit Shift A and we're going to add in another icosphere. Now we want to join these two together, but we need this to be separate from our top line. So the way we can do that is to search for Join Geometry. Then we'll just drop this before the Group Output node and hook our icosphere up that way. Let's change the radius to 0.25. And of course, we don't want this to be in the center. We want it to move within the torus. So we just need to add a transform node. Then, of course, we want to move this downwards on the z-axis. But we want to make sure that it's right in the center. And the best way to do that is just to use the radius of our original curve. So you'll see that the radius is 1, which just means from the center out to the edge. So if we were to type in minus 1, you'll see that it pops right into the center. The next thing that we want to do is have our icosphere rotate around the torus, and it's actually pretty simple, so we're just going to add an additional transform node right next to the first one. Then you'll see if I just click and drag the X rotation, we get exactly the animation that we want. So just make sure that you're on frame 1, then we can just right click the X rotation and insert a single keyframe. You'll notice that if I select the transform, our keyframes aren't showing up because we don't have our object selected. So you'll see as soon as I click on it, our keyframes show up. I'm just going to turn off overlays for now just so things are easier to see. 
now that we've got our first keyframe we want to add our second so i'm just going to click here to jump all the way to the final keyframe and anytime you're doing a looping animation like this you always want to go one frame past the ending for my animation i used 1080 so i'm just going to type that in and add a new keyframe if i hit play you'll see that it starts kind of slow and if i go to the end you'll see that it kind of slows down and starts up so again, just make sure your transform node is selected as well as the object. Just hover over the timeline, hit T and select a linear. Now that we've got that, we need to make this icosphere affect the rest of our nodes. And the simplest way to do that is by using a proximity node. Hit shift A and if you type in prox, you'll see that we have a geometry proximity node. So we can just select that and drop it right here. Then we just need to grab our geometry output and drop that into the target. Then we just need to take the distance output and we can hook that directly into the scale. If I hit play, you'll see that our icosphere is affecting the scale of our instances based on its proximity to them. You'll notice that the animation is a little bit basic, so we can just add a couple more nodes to make it a little bit more interesting. Hit shift A and type in math. Then we can just drop this math node right in between. If you hover over this selection menu here and hold control, you can just scroll through using your mouse wheel, which will just give you more of a real time idea of how things look. In my case, I use the fraction option. I just want to add one more node and this node isn't completely necessary, but it does give you a little bit more control. In this case, I'm just going to change the from max to three. Now I'm going to come back to our icosphere radius and type in 0.3. The map range node is pretty powerful, but in this case we're almost just using it to control the fall off of the size. Now we've got the first part of our animation done. You'll notice in mine I've also got something going through the center, and it's pretty simple to set up. So let's head back to the curved circle and hit shift D. Then we'll just bring this under the rest of the nodes and hook this up to our join geometry. You'll see that nothing showed up if I just add the overlays back on. You'll see that our circle is right here. We just want to change the rotation so we can take our original transform node. Then just hit shift D to duplicate and we'll just drop this right in here. Now you'll see our curve is going right through the center. We also want to add instances to this, so we can just select our instance node. Again, hit shift D, and then we'll just drop this in right after the transform. Then for the instance, we can just add another icosphere and connect that to the instance. Then just set the radius to 0.075. If I just remove our top line and hit play, you'll notice that we do have our instances, but they're not being affected by our icosphere. So we can just take the output from our geometry proximity node, then hook that into the scale input of our new instance. Now I'm just going to reconnect our original instances. And now if I hit play, you'll see that we've got our completed animation. There's only one more node to add, and that's just so that we can set our materials. So I'm going to search for set material. And for my animation, I just drop this right at the end so that everything gets the same material. Then I just want to bring up the shader editor. So I'm going to go over here, click and drag to add a new window. Select this and click shader. I'm just going to click here and add a new material. Then if we jump back to our geometry nodes, we can click on this window and select our material. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please make sure to like and subscribe. As well, if you want to support me even further, you can head over to my Patreon page and sign up to become a member. You'll get this blend file as well as a bunch of other blend files that I've made for my past tutorials. And you'll be supporting me in growing the channel. Okay, I hope to see you soon. Bye!